Hey there! Are you not entertained? Today we're going to have a look at this pen. This is the Armando Simoni Club Gladiatore Medio. And uh, this pen, I would say, is in size and in shape largely a... Uh, I don't really want to say reproduction because it's not exactly the same pen, but it is certainly of all the same proportions as the either original Paragon, not the large Omas Paragon, but the regular size Paragon, or the Omas Milord. Uh, and I do have one, not right here within arm's reach, but once I tilt the camera down, I will show you that these two pens are very similar, and I do want to do a shootout between the two, just to show you the, um, the, the differences and similarities. It's a nice pen. It's Arco Celluloid. People go berserk over Arco Celluloid and it is very pretty and people are already thinking, oh, doesn't the facets line up? Oh, doesn't the pattern line up? Yes, it lines up pretty well. I just hadn't lined it up. So, I'm going to cover the parts of the pen. I will do a writing sample. I will tell you what I like about it and what I don't like about it. Let's get started. Okay, the Gladiatore Medio by Armando Simoni Club in Arco Bronze. Expensive pen, 1195 US um, MSRP, but street price is a little lower. I've seen for around 950. Bear in mind though, they are not really made anymore, as far as I understand. So you would really have to go to the aftermarket or find a spot that still has one or two lying around. This pen is really made to resemble the original size Omas Paragons, or in this case, Milord. So the, the, the Paragons are complicated because you have the original Paragon, which was about this size, and now that we're talking about size, here's a Pilot Metropolitan, so it's about that size. That was the original Paragon. Then Omas made a larger Paragon, which is typically called the Grand Paragon. And they made a different type of pen called the Milord. And this is a Milord. It's not a Paragon. It's a Milord, um, at least as far as I know. Um, and because I think the original smaller style Paragons did not have this metal ring here. That's how I remember it. In any case, an original size Paragon and a Milord are pretty much the same size. They're, 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 Pretty much identical. So this Gladiatore Medio is meant to be that size, but not the size of the original. Sorry, not the not the size of the Grand Paragons. That is a different type of pen. So there you go. I hope that was clear. Um, Arco bronze, very desirable uh, material that people really like. Time for sip of tea. Comes at a price, right? It's a desired material, so it's very expensive. You get the nice little Greek key band. Uh, you get an additional metal band there, which as you can see, the original pens did not have. They had that band and then they had the lip of the cap and that can crack. So I don't think this is a terrible uh, alteration that was made. Let's cover the parts of the pen because I don't think I have a whole lot to say. It's piston filled, it's a gold nib, but it's just, it's like a, Paragon or a Malort, but it's but it's not right. It's a different different company slightly different thing So on top here the finial um, It says ASC Armando Simoni Club Then we have the Oma style clip with the little wheel. Uh, these are kind of fun They work pretty well um, We have this Greek key band which is something uh, ASC has really done a lot of their pens and we have the additional metal piece to, to keep the cap from cracking. I think that really was a good addition. Like I said, it's a beautiful material and yes, you can make the material line up. Uh, I know that was bothering some people. Uh, very pretty, the Arco Celluloid. We have another gold colored ring there and then the turning knob uh, and that's pretty much it. There is no Armando Simoni Club engraving on the barrel or on the cap that I could see beyond, of course, what's on the finial. When you uncap it, you get this pen. Uh, the, the shape of the section on the Gladiatore is a little different from the Milord. 
um, but I don't think in a bad way you get that additional uh, metal ring and I said I would do a shootout between these two so I will record that. Now you can see them side by side more. They have another Greek key gold ring which I think is quite nice. I like this section a lot how it tapers out that there is not a metal ring there. Often metal rings like that end up corroding at some point because they keep being put into ink and I like that that's not the case here. We have these threads. There are a lot of threads but they're really fine so you barely feel them. Um, from like when the light is not right you barely even see them right so i think that's a very nice touch there is a step down from the barrel just like with the original paragons whether that's the grand or the uh, the malord size paragons uh, original paragons or the malords themselves doesn't matter there is a step down because this section is quite long though i really don't feel that step down except for right there in my thumb oh my uh, index finger or, or middle fingers, I don't even feel it. So I think that's really quite nice. These are pens that um, not really meant to post because the facets and all that doesn't, doesn't really work well, so don't, don't try. Um, nib is gold. Uh, these are 18K nibs in uh, yellow gold, um, and um, uh, they have a nice ASC logo on them uh, with sort of Art Deco pattern which I think is quite nice and an ebonite feed which is really nice for the flow characteristics. Piston fill pen, piston turning knob and that's all there's to it. I can't tell if this is a captive converter. I, I, I can't. I, I don't want to open this up. It's not my pen. So there you have all the parts of the pen. Let's have a look at how it writes. Um, I want to say this is a medium nib. Waterman Blue. Now, this pen, from what I understood, was purchased by Murray from Wacko Jacko, uh, and he is the resident nibmeister in Calgary. Um, the nib is very smooth, but I would not be surprised if that's because Jack actually tuned that, uh, which is what he does to most of his nibs, if not all of them, and he does like his nib smooth. So, I would be inclined to say that's what happened here. It is certainly a very, very pleasant writer, and with the ebonite feed, just a delicious wetness to it. Really, really pleasant. Line variation. Well, I found that this nib is actually surprisingly springy and just being very careful. I don't believe these were advertised as the Magic Flex nibs. Uh, they're certainly not labeled as such, but as you can see, you can squeeze out a bit of line variation without issue and without any harm to the nib. Don't push it too hard. It's not a flex nib, but I'm just saying I think that's quite, quite interesting. For those of you who enjoy such a thing, there is always the reverse writing dilemma. Um, it's scratchier, but it's also thinner, so if that's really what you want, uh, the pen seems to keep up pretty well with ink demand that way. So, for the mathematician friends out there, you can actually write your equations like that. And that is pretty much all that's to it. So, I think what we need to do next is talk about likes and dislikes for the Gladiatore Medio. What do I like, what do I not like about the Gladiatore? Um, there are a couple of things I like. So this is basically a matter of tell me you're an Omas without telling me you're an Omas. Um, and given that Omas is no longer in business, I don't know that there's necessarily anything wrong with recreating pens that they used to make and that were very successful. I also find the facets interesting. I've always liked that about the, the Paragon models, the My Lord models. They really make the material pop, and especially when it's attractive material like the Arco celluloid that people go insane over. Uh, it does bring out that material in a very attractive way, so that I really like. Nice nib, um, which is a pleasant writer, 18K, with an ebonite feed, which is nice. Ebonite feeds have very nice flow characteristics, so you do get a very pleasant writer. You do have the piston-filled system, sorry, filling system, 
Um, so I think that's very nice. Uh, and I, I, I quite like it. You, I think the difficulty for people, for some people, is the idea of it's an omas, but it's not really an omas. And that is true. And that is true. Uh, but then look around and buy an omas. And this is something else. Similar, but something else, with just a little, you know, a little different, with an extra little ring there, and I think that's a good improvement, so that that that, that uh, the celluloid is more protected uh, there. I think those are good improvements. <clears throat> uh, like I said, ebonite feed piston filler, like it's it's all fun. The Omas pistons were also known to be pretty fragile, uh, so I hope this is a an improvement in, in, in piston, uh, just the, the actual physical piston is, is an improvement over what Omas used to do. Uh, I think it has a lot going for it. The price is certainly high, 1195 MSRP. Uh, street price, uh, I've seen it for around 950. Um, that's still a lot of money. These are expensive pens. Arco celluloid is incredibly hot and I'm not trying to justify it, I'm just saying people go insane over this kind of material. So. Yeah, that that will uh, there will be a high price whether you like it or not. And uh, they're not necessarily easy to find, right? ASC tends to do limited runs of pens, so you really have to look around. But I I have found that on on the aftermarket you you do find them once in a while. So as always, that look around, see where you can find them, uh, and if you really want one. Uh, and that's it, the Gladiatore Medio. I hope this was useful. Let me know what you think of the pen, and uh, I'll gladly see you later. Bye.